General, uh, it seems to me reading your book that you reserve some of your fiercest criticism for the way the military or the MOD buys stuff and, and that the whole procurement process uh, is potentially incredibly wasteful. Is that is that true? Well, I think you're right, it is. Um, I think that, of course, distorts the whole image of the Ministry of Defence and the Armed Forces. The operating side of what the Army, Navy and the Air Force does actually is very efficient. But the procurement aspect of what the Ministry of Defence does does need serious sorting out. And this is where we get cost overruns. This is where we go badly over budget. So there needs to be, in the defence review that's coming up, a significant separation between the operating costs and the procurement side. The problem with the procurement side in recent times, or one of the problems amongst many, is that there was an override from number 10 to say we don't want to fuss in defence. We're not going to take big decisions about some of the major programmes that would result in job losses and cuts to the programme because we don't want that kind of fuss. Now, when you've got that kind of political override, very hard for the Defence Board, very hard for the Secretary of State for Defence to take sensible decisions to reduce the cost overruns which we know were going on. So that's one major aspect of it. That's not true at the moment, as, as we know only too well. You know, the, the, the government is saying we want major, major savings. We have to make major decisions. Is, is this period of time now a, a, a period where the sort of life and soul of the various different services is being fought over? Well, the problem the current government, the coalition government, has, has inherited is a 35 billion overrun on programmes over the next 10 years. So even if the Chancellor was to insist that the Ministry of Defence took a 5% or 10% cut to its budget today, the Ministry of Defence has already got to deal with 35 billion of overspending plans for the next 10 years. So they're going to have to be cuts anyway. Mm -hmm. So therefore you're really getting down to both the process by which we procure our equipment, which has got to be shaken up because it's too lengthy, it's too tedious. And secondly, what the programmes are themselves. And therefore you get to an examination of the big ticket issues like fast jets, aircraft carriers, tanks and artillery, and indeed, dare I say, the uh, independent deterrent. Yes, because when you talk about the uh, FRES, the Future Rapid Effects System. Systems, I don't think I've got right, um, you talk about it in terms of it, it, it being shunted into the long grass time and time again in favour of big boats, big planes and the like. Is that a, f a failing of the system or is that, dare I say it, you know, what you wanted the money spent on didn't happen? You, you could argue that there's some sour grapes in there, I suppose. You could. Big ticket items like aircraft carriers, frigates, fast jets, submarines, will always attract a lot of attention because they generate a lot of jobs. What One accepts that. When Lord Drayson became the um, Minister of State for Defence Procurement um, a, a number of years ago, he was consumed initially on his own admission with driving through some of those um, ship programmes, submarine programmes and fast jet programmes. It took us quite some time in the army to persuade him that we had a major shortcoming as well, which was a whole programme for our medium weight vehicles. Um, so that we had an army with a capacity in the future to have equipment that was heavy enough to be effective when it got to a theatre of operations, but light enough to be flown there or taken there in fast shipping. We didn't have that. We don't have it. And the FRES programme, the Future Rapid Effect System, would have given us that. Because it was very difficult to articulate that and win the argument sufficiently within the Ministry of Defence against big ticket items like fast jets and Type 45 frigates and whatever, eventually the FRES programme got squeezed. For Iraq and Afghanistan, um, a number of short notice programmes were put in place to give us cobbled together vehicles to do the job better than we were able to do previously in Iraq and Afghanistan. The net result was that the Army's medium weight programme, the FRES programme, got squeezed when there wasn't enough money for everything. Is it too simplistic to say that we can no longer afford a big army, a big air force and a big navy and we need to make decisions about that? It is very difficult to conceive on the reduced defence budget that we'll have in the future that we can have a First Division Army, Navy and Air Force and fund an independent nuclear deterrent replacement system all within the defence budget. There have got to be some serious decisions and some programme cancellations and some reductions. We can all point to where some of these areas should be. In the Army, we'll have to reduce the number of tanks and heavy artillery we have and look very closely at the operating costs associated with staying in Germany. I think we're going to have, we have got too many fast jets for our national security needs and we've got to look very closely at the kind of navy we want in the future. Is it right that we put a lot of our maritime eggs in two big baskets, the two aircraft carriers, when we've actually got to protect the sea lanes on which our trade depends and make sure our vital supplies uh, do get through to this country and our trade is enabled? There's a big issue to be had there. We can't go on as we are 
big decisions are going to be taken this autumn.